Hey, how you doing? Hope you all are doing great. As you've seen in the thumbnail, in this video, we're going to see what if Naruto got harem with Gwen Tennyson. This is part one. And before getting into video, I request you to check the author of this fanfic and show some love and support. Name of the story is The New Tennyson by G is Scion. Do check it out. All details and description. And if you want next part of this series, please leave a like, share, and consider subscribe. Let's get into the video. Also check out Patreon for uncensored spicy content. Link in description. Life for Nami. No Uzumaki Naruto in the village of Kanoha has been nothing short of horrible, and it all had to do with the fact that he had the young chakra of the QB no Yoko in him sealed by the diseased Haruzen Saratobi. As if that wasn't bad enough, his ability to use chakra was all but lost. His faith. The man who gave birth to him never paid attention to him. All the attention from his parents was given to his twin sister, the supposed hero of the leaf, for keeping the in part of the QB's chakra, and having as much chakra as her mother and father. Because of that, she was able to do everything they taught her. They doted on her and left him in the dark like an unused piece of paper. He tried to ask his parents to learn the basics of sealing, but the answer was always negative. No, Naruto. Sealing is dangerous for you, his father said. Why don't you help encourage your sister in completing her new skill? His mother said, to top it all off, his sister was being a bitch of the entire situation because of all the attention she was getting from their parents and godfather, the Toad Sanin, Jiraiya, and their godbrother Kakashi. Added to the fact that the village abuse him every corner, call him names, and form mobs to attack him. Today was their eighth birthday. And they, including Jiraiya, all went out leaving him behind in the house, and with nothing left to do, he went to the forest of death to train, wishing himself a happy birthday, hoping something good will happen in his life to him for once. Naruto was sitting under a tree wearing brown shorts, a blue shirt, and an orange sleeveless hoodie that was over his head, tired from the punching he gave the tree. He looked up in the sky, thinking how nice the stars were and saw shooting star. I wish I had the power to leave this place on my own and have a comfortable life he wished as he closed his eyes. As he opened his eyes, he saw the shooting star change its direction, heading straight to his area. He had to leave fast before it hit, and when it crashed, a crater was formed from the star. A curious Naruto walked to the crater to see a cylindrical object in his smoking from the intense heat it gathered. He walked to inspect it, and when he got closer, the object opened up as if it was keeping something safe, and what he saw there sort of took his world for a spin. Sitting in the object was an item that resembles a wristwatch. It has a square faceplate and has a white and green color scheme. The faceplate is black with two green stripes forming an outline for the hourglass. Naruto reached for the object with his left hand, but was surprised when it latched onto his wrist. Now as a child of the fourth Hokage, Naruto knew when to be calm in situations like this, so he was as calm as he could be and inspected the watch on his wrist. When he saw what looked like dials on it, he pressed both of them together and an image of several creatures appeared as playlists for him to pick. As he was about to scroll the different selections, a hologram, he knows what it is, appeared showing a small gray creature with large green eyes and something that resembled a mustache on its face. He looked old and wise, and Naruto was surprised as the creature knew who he was. Greetings, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. My name is Azmuth, and I am the creator of this version Omnimatrix, or simply, Omnitrix on your wrist. I sent it to you knowing what life you lived. Yes, I know how your family treated you. I couldn't let that stand, so I built a device powerful enough to help you leave the village and find a proper family who will raise you like their own, not only that. In case the original version of the Omnitrix I send doesn't make it to the right destination and falls in the wrong hands, you probably are the only being on the planet powerful enough to beat him or her. I sent coordinates to the location of a family that would be glad to have you as their child, as it would calm their lives and yours. Train hard, and may the stars be with you. The hologram said as it disappeared from view. Naruto was intrigued at what just happened, but he knew that he had to get home because someone had to have noticed the crash site. He just didn't know it, but his wish was just granted indirectly. Two years later. It's been two years since a seven-year-old Naruto found the Omnitrix in the forest of death. One year since he had gained mastery of his forms and with the help of Grey Matter, an alien that was from the same clan as Azmuth, he was able to unlock the master control of the Omnitrix. Now he can transform into all 15 different species at any given time, but he knew that he was still weak to fight on his own so in the year that just passed. 
he was able to master eight 15 species. Of the different species he had, his most favorite was Chitrax, Ultimate Alien, Fast Track, an alien based on speed and strength, but the downside was the streaks it left behind. His other favorite alien was Wrath, Wrath. He was a nine feet tall and resembles an orange and white bipedal tiger with one claw coming out of each wrist and no tail. He had a very interesting way of speech, but that wasn't all. He was really strong and had enhanced senses like most other species. He also had a few other favorites like Siberian, Big Chill, Hot Spot, Heat Blast, Ordnance, for arms, and Elevation Upgrade. His least favorite was Maxilla, Rip Jaws, because of the need for water. Today marked another year to Naruto's life as he left his room in black baggy pants and orange short sleeve shirt with a pair of orange sneakers. He walked down the stairs with a scowl on his face as he heard the party being thrown for his sister. Happy birthday, Nami, his father said. That's right. Today is your ninth birthday, his father said. And I think it's time to see what we got you. His godbrother said, Naruto just waited patiently leaning on the stair rail for someone to notice him, but he knew that wasn't going to happen, so he watched as they started showering his twin with presents. Even the clan heads and their children were here to celebrate their birthday or his sister's birthday. First was Kakashi, who brought out a scroll for one of his techniques she'll need in the future. The second was Tsum, who got her a puppy, someone she could play around it, and the sight was sort of refreshing. The third were the Ino Shikacho, who settled for a gift certificate and a shogi board. The fourth was Hisashi, who handed her an envelope that she was to open later. The fifth was from her mother, who just gave her the Uzumaki clan's famous sword, Red Death. The sixth was from her father, who presented a water balloon and gave it to her, something that infuriated him and surprised some people there who knew what it meant. But his father said that he had another surprise for later. Okay, I think it's time for my present, Jiraiya said as he weaved out hand signs and a scroll appeared on his hand. Isn't she a little young to be signing the summoning scroll? A curious yet excited Minato Namikes asked. Jiraiya just waved off his student's worry and handed the scroll to an excited Nami who just quickly signed it without any second thought right under her father's name. I'm so proud. Kushina gushed out to her daughter as she signed the contract. Before you know it, she'll be stronger than her old man. Choza Akamichi spoke out with his jovial voice. Minato ignored it and got everyone's attention. Can I have your attention, please? Minato asked, and as he saw, everybody focus on him. He continued, I would like to announce the ascension of my daughter as rightful clan heir to the Uzumaki Namike's clan. She has earned that responsibility, and I hope she doesn't abuse it. He announced to the shocked crowd who was silent at this announcement. Clap, clap. Everybody turned around to the long-forgotten child that was clapping at this announcement on the stairway. They were shocked that they forgot him and that it was supposed to be his birthday to making some of them feel guilty and the rest either annoyed or indifferent. Bravo, Namikesama. Bravo, the still-clapping Naruto announced. Naruto? Kushina asked, shocked, that she forgot about her son. You know, I was wondering when you were finally going to pull this stunt. Some part of me prayed that it won't happen, but after the events just witnessed. Naruto said as he walked down the stairs to the door with his hands in his pocket. What the heck, Naruto? Can't you see you're ruining my party? Nami rudely asked her twin. Nami was like a mini carbon copy of Kushina. She had on blue trousers and an orange long sleeve blouse with a pair of blue shinobi sandals. Yeah, loser. Leave us alone. An eight-year-old Ino shouted. That actually hurt a bit coming from her of all people. Ino was a small girl with blonde hair and pale blue eyes. She wore a simple orange shirt and black trousers and brown trousers. She used to be his only friend in the village when he was four years old after his parents left him in the ramen stand. It wasn't until he told her who his family was that she abandoned him for his sister like his parents did so. For her to insult him actually hurt, but he ignored her and continued. Oh, I don't intend on staying. Naruto said as he reached for the door and grabbed the handle, if this is how this family is going to be all the time, then I'm glad I was just expelled from the clan. And with that said, Naruto left the house and slammed the door on the way out. With the shocked family, slap. Minato Namikaze held his red cheek as it was slapped by his wife who was currently glaring at him with her purple eyes. I thought I told you not to go through with it. Kushina yelled at her husband, enraged at what he did. Minato winced at being yelled at his wife, but Kushina, don't you, but Kushina me. When Naruto gets home, you'll retract the ascension, am I understood? She didn't even wait for an answer, 
as she left her house in the same manner that Naruto did, with a slam on the door leaving a shocked group of people behind. Cake! Nami yelled, catching the attention of everyone present who were glad for the distraction. With Naruto, as soon as he made sure he wasn't seen, Naruto quickly rolled up his sleeve and revealed the Omnitrix on his wrist. He picked the species he wanted and smacked the faceplate, and in a flash of green light, what stood in place of Naruto wasn't the one he picked, but something new. The alien resembles a semi-armored velociraptor from the list of species of aliens Azmuth sent him on his eighth birthday. He has black balls on his feet and wears a helmet with a visor, leaving the other features of his head unknown. One can see that he has a blue face, green eyes, and black lips and stripes. He wears the Omnitrix on his chest. He has five blue stripes on his tail. The creature inspected himself and blinked not what I was going for, but it does have about the same ability as Chitrax. I think I'll call this one Rush. With that, he got into a ready stance and a visor covered his face sweet. Rush said then in a burst of impressive speed. He left the area to his destination in full sprint. One short run later, Naruto was in the forest of death in his human appearance, and what he saw shocked him. There laid in front of him were items addressed to him, two scrolls and a sword that was sheathed completely. The grip of the sword was decorated in blue and white stripes, and the guard was designed as a four-pointed star. He went to pick it up and felt the sword vibrate on his hand, as if accepting his touch. He slung it over his shoulder and went to inspect the two scrolls. The first was a scroll on a certain type of taijutsu, the Gokin. He could only guess where this had come from thanks Lee, guy he thought as he placed the scroll in his pocket. He looked at the other. It was a scroll for Kenjutsu beginners with a note written at the bottom. Happy birthday from you, Gao, Lee and Guy. He was glad that at least some people remembered his birthday, but was sad when he knew that he'd have to leave them and gladly pocketed the scroll in his other pocket. He got up and saw that the day was still bright, so he left to a scheduled part of the forest to start practice on his taijutsu skill till daybreak when he knew he would leave this place. With Kushina, she had gotten a tongue lashing, oh how she treated her soon from her best friend. She wouldn't have believed it if it weren't true come to think of it. As she got home, she tried to remember the fun activities all four of them did together, but could think up with nothing. She was even ashamed of herself when she realized that, after two, they stopped caring about celebrating Naruto's birthday with Nami's. She prided herself on being a good mother and an Uzumaki that follows the family code, but she was sure her grandfather would be ashamed with her actions. She got up from hers and Minato's bed with a new determination from now on. I will do as much as I can to be there for my son, she thought as she left the room going to prepare a big bowl of ramen for the entire family. With Minato, being the kage of a village and having a family meant one thing. Either pick the village or the family. So don't blame him if he wanted to keep the village safe by having his children as the Jinchuruki of the QB no Yoko. He knew he was alienating his son, but out had to be done for the greater good of the village. And his daughter was the child of the prophecy something him and Jiraiya knew of because of the details. Someday, you will take on a pupil. This student will become the harbinger of a great revolution in the world of the ninja. They will finally bring peace to the world or utterly destroy it, so the result of their revolution will be one or the other. The great toad sage said to Jiraiya, Minato was sure that his daughter was the prophecy child since she had the power and the chakra and the lineage to back it up in Naruto had nothing just the yang of the Kyuubi's chakra. He knew that in order for the prophecy to come true, they had to focus on his daughter, and Jiraiya knew that so he believed himself to be justified lose a thousand to save a million, he thought as he looked at his family picture. He frowned trying to remember if he made the right decision with his son, but was interrupted when his door was slammed open and Kushina stormed in with a note on her hand and was surprised when she slammed it on his desk. He looked at her wife who had a distraught look on her face. Read, she said as she pointed to the letter in front of them. He picked it up and opened it. Dear Namika Zesama, since the fourth Hokage in all his glory decided to expel me from the clan, I decided that it would be pointless to live in a village that doesn't want you. I always figured that Nami would be the one who both of you would love. I will be leaving the village to find a family that would not put me in the back for their own pleasure. I will show the world that what an old toad says should not be dictated as law. No matter what you try to do, I will not come back into a family that will sacrifice their family for the betterment of the village. Since I am a civilian and clan less, the Hokage will have to break a few laws to drag me back to the village. If you come for me, remember this, I will fight. 
I wonder, Namike Sama, will you put your own Exxon into the bingo book and send out Hunter Neens? From Naruto, no name. Minato dropped the sheet of paper in shock at this. He was expecting his son to be angry and try to beg his way back into the family, but this was extreme. He looked to his wife, who was about to start crying, and snapped his fingers, signaling for his personal guards. Umbu! Four AMBU guards immediately appeared in front of the Hokage on their knees. He looked at each of them and ordered, Get me Hitaki Kakashi. I want him in my office yesterday. Hey, Hokitsama! The AMBU captain said, and they left with a soundless shushin. Moments later, Kakashi appeared reading his orange novel, Aika Aika, or Come Come Paradise, published by Jiraiya. He looked at his sensei and greeted casually. Yo! Minato sighed at his student's antics and handed him the letter. Kakashi looked confused at first, but read it. As he read further and further, he was shocked at what was written. He looked at Minato, who was serious. What do you need me to do? He asked the Hokage in a businesslike manner. Track his scent while these AMBU follow and bring him back alive. If you have any difficulties, call me. Minato said as he got up and walked to his distraught wife and looked back at them, but I don't expect you to have any since he practically is a civilian. With that, he left his office and his student ordered the AMBU guard to meet him at the gate in 10 minutes. With Naruto, Naruto was running in a pair of black pants with red stripes at the side of his hips, trailing down to the feet, where he wore dark red sneakers. On the upper part of his body, he had on a black long sleeve shirt and an orange short sleeve jacket with a hood. Underneath the sleeve of his shirt on his wrist was the Omnitrix, and on his back was an orange backpack with a sword and the two scrolls he got as a birthday gift from his only friends in the village. Naruto was running as fast as he looked back to see no one gaining on him. He was about to enter the border of Nami, no kuni to head for the port when he heard a voice. Namake's Naruto, you are here by order to stop what you're doing and head home. Shit. Naruto looked to where the voice was spoken and saw an AMBU agent standing in front of him preventing him from moving further. He looked around and noticed the appearance of three other EMBU and cursed his luck before drawing back the sleeve on his left arm, revealing an active Omnitrix. Let's see what you say when I freeze you up, he declared as he pressed the dial and smashed the faceplate after selecting the alien he wanted and in a flash of green light. What they were seeing wasn't Naruto instead. They saw a humanoid, moth-like creature whose wings and antenna can fold it up into a hooded robe, giving him the appearance of a phantom. Siberian, the creature announced in a cold voice. The AMBU were surprised at this development, giving Naruto the opening to cloak himself before inhaling and exhaling cold air in front of the AMBU captain, and it was only due to his active Sharingan eye that he was able to substitute with the nearest log on time, freezing it in his place. Don't let that fog hit you. The captain ordered, and they all got in a place looking for the blue insect-like creature who was still in his cloak mode. If that won't work, he aimed for the dial on his chest plate. How about a little speed? He then smacked the dial on his chest, and in a flash of green. He was not the alien he picked Rom by. He asked in confusion, seeing the diamond on his skin. He was a silicon-based life form. His body is composed of durable green crystals. He sports four green crystal shards on his back, and has a sharp head. His outfit consisted of the color scheme, orange and black. He had on black sneakers and with a belt on his hip revealing the Omnitrix symbol. For the top, wore a sleeveless v-neck shirt that had an orange stripe on the middle and black stripe on the two sides. Naruto looked at his hand as its shape shifted nice. He then aimed at the ANBU and shot from the already downloaded knowledge based on his skills. Green Diamond shot at the ANBU in his sight firing fast enough to hit the off-guard AMBU. Naruto then aimed at the others and was firing timed shots, but he knew one was missing, so he wasn't surprised when one tried to attack him from behind, so he used his arm which shape-shifted into a blade to block the oncoming sword strike and grabbed the sword before encasing it and its wielder in a large diamond. That will hold you for some time, Naruto said as he inspected his handiwork, but he didn't notice the ANBU weaving hand signs for the grand fireball jutsu behind him. Katon. Gokaku no Jutsu, Fire Style. Fireball Jutsu. Naruto heard the attack and formed a shield with his hands, blocking the incoming attack, sweating while doing it. That's some heat, but I can make hotter. Naruto said before he smacked the dial on his waist, and in a blinding green light, a new voice was heard. Hot spot. Gong was the diamond alien that they were fighting, and in its place was something different. 
Hotspot is a magma-based creature whose body is composed of a bright inner magma body covered by a dark red or brown rocks. As a fire-based entity, his body radiates high amounts of heat that was being felt by the people in the area. His feet have slight oval-like design with only two toes and one back toe. I thought that he was supposed to be weak. An ANBU said to his other two remaining comrades, but was interrupted when all four were surrounded by a ring of fire. Naruto flew out and aimed placed both arms on the ground, igniting the heat more, increasing the height and temperature of the heat, completely suffocating every ANBU in the ring. As Naruto heard the last ANBU drop, he put out the fire and powered down, looking at his downed opponents and the one encased in the diamond. Han didn't think he'd actually go through with sending ANBU after me. He said, and as he was about to continue his journey, a voice froze him in his tracks. That's because you're my son, and I'll do anything to get you home safely. As Naruto turned back and he saw Minato Namikaze in full Hokage battle robes with his cloak and kanai ready. Beside him was Hitaki Kakashi reading the porn novel in his hand. Naruto just glared, what do you want? He asked. Minato sighed Naruto. I'm sorry for the way I treated you, but this has to stop. He said, you're sorry? Naruto calmly asked, you're sorry. He shouted angry at what was said, then he calmed down and took deep breaths. You had nine years to treat me right. Nine years to get your act straight. Nine years. And you think you can end redeem your words by saying you're sorry. He pressed the dial in his Omnitrix and the playlist came up and before Kakashi tried to stop him. Naruto had selected the alien he wanted smash the faceplate. And in a flash of green light, he picked his most favorite alien. Chitrax. He shouted, and what Minato and Kakashi saw was a cat feline-like creature with a black suit-like color scheme. His hands, legs, part of his head and chest are colored blue. He has spikes on his hands and legs. He also has a black wolverine mask-like fins around his green eyes. He has a triangle-shaped nose and a thunderbolt-like design down his chest. He had the Omnitrix symbol on his chest. What's this one supposed to do? Kakashi asked with an eyebrow raised. Naruto raised an unexisting eyebrow and smirked, you think you're standing beside the fasted man in the nations? He then took the sprinting stance, think again. And in a burst of speed, he was in front of Kakashi and gave him a punch, sending the mast down and flying away. Naruto looked beside him to see a shocked Minato recovering quickly, gripping his kanai. I'm sorry I have to do this, Naruto, but with powers like that, there's no way I'm letting you leave the village. Minato said. So he threw his kanai at his transformed son who scowled at the act. Time slowed down as he turned around giving the reappearing Minato a heavy punch to the gut surprising the Hokage at how fast his son had gotten before he saw his son grab his special kanai and crushed it to dust. Time resumed at its normal speed and Minato was on the floor holding his hurt stomach with a wince as he got up on one knee reaching into his pocket to get another kanai. But before he could do that, he eyes rolled to the back of his head, falling face first on the ground. Naruto was standing behind his so-called father with his hand in the chopping motion before he picked up the body and dropped it on the pile of knocked out ambu bodies in a burst of speed. He dashed to Kakashi's body and did the same thing before stepping back, tapping the dial on his chest, turning to Siberia. He opened up his wings as he inhaled cold air before blowing it all over the pile of bodies and the still crystallized ambu creating an ice dome almost hard to break before he turned back into Chitrax and spat at the dome in disgust. Try to get out of that. He then turned around and left the area arriving at the shipping port of Wave Country. He inhaled and exhaled, sending the coordinates to a specific group of family azimuth recommended to his head before speaking out in expiration. This is going to be a long run, and with a burst of speed, he dashed over the water, heading out of the elemental nations with a smile on his face, thinking of how it was worth it all. The announcer in the bus spoke as each individual listened on. One certain individual was glad to be home, so he could see his family, and he wondered how big his little rascal of a brother had grown. This certain individual in thought had blonde spiky hair and bright blue eyes. He wore a red long sleeve buttonless hood with black stripes at the side of each arm, going from its shoulder to its wrist. He was wearing black trousers and a pair of black and white sneakers. For accessories, he had a noise canceller headphones and a unique kind of watch on his wrist. This was Naruto Uzumaki, 
and he was currently listening to music as he thought about the events that lead him here. He thought back to the past four years of his life, from how he saved his future adoptive guardian from a hostage situation to how the tearful goodbye he received from his real family. Flashback for years ago. As Chitrax, Naruto was running across the continent with one destination in mind as per recommendations. Bell would, and as he got there, it was midday, and apparently something interesting was happening in the news from what he saw on the display TVs. On other news, police still haven't made leeway at the hostage situation in Bellwood National Bank. It appears that the bands are armed to their teeth, as any wrong move would force drastic measures to be taken on their prisoners. The reporter announced, Naruto got a look at what the bank looked like. He knew it would be wrong to leave the people to their devices, so he dashed to an alley nearby, and in a flash of green light, he revealed his normal form coming out from it. He looked to the right and saw a passerby and asked kindly, Excuse me, ma'am, I'm new here and I was wondering if you could pie me to the nearest bank. Naruto said, and the lady smiled at how this young boy was polite and couldn't help but ask, Aren't you a little young to be walking all alone in a bank? Naruto scratched his head in embracement my parents and I were going for a tour of the town and I happened to separate from them a few minutes ago, but before the separation, we were heading to the bank as the next stop. Naruto lied casually. The female scowled what type of parents leave their child unattended for. She muttered, apparently, the parents that tend to be easily distracted. Naruto replied. The woman smiled and pointed just around the corner two blocks away. She said, Naruto waved his thanks but had a pressed face gotta go. He then rushed to the nearest bathroom running as if he needed to pee, but that was just a cover for his real plan. He had used the Omnitrix a lot today, so this had to be short and quick, or it would just deactivate on its own. Should have just accessed the master control. Naruto muttered, and as he pressed the dials on the watch, a circular two-dimensional hologram with a play list of aliens appeared once the faceplate was moved. Naruto slid the images to the side and picked the alien he wanted and slammed it down. In a flash of green light, an annoyed Naruto spoke to the dial on his chest in a wrestler-like tone. Let me tell you something, Omnitrix. Next time you choose the alien Wrath wants, or Wrath will destroy you. Yes, Naruto wasn't the speedy alien he wanted, no. He was instead a nine-feet-tall, orange, and white bipedal tiger with one claw coming out of each wrist and no tail. He is also muscular and has green eyes. Wrath then pressed the dial on his chest, and in the same green light. Gone was Wrath, and in its place... Chitrax who nodded in appreciation much better. He said, and in a burst of speed, he left the washroom he was in and hurried to the bank. With the police. Any confirmation on that backup private? Police officer one asked. None at the moment, chief. We're on our the private was interrupted when the wind blew and looked around to find the cause. What in God's name was that? The chief asked. I don't know, chief. The private said as they held their positions once again. In the bank, scattered in a group around the center of the room, were civilians and bankers of every kind. Today was just a normal day for these citizens until about a dozen armed robbers came to steal their money. Right now, they're demanding for ransom from the police and as what looked like the leader of the thugs was about to speak, he suddenly disappeared and appeared in front of the chief of police, armless and tied up ready for capture. The leader looked around and saw he was outside the bank. What just happened? He asked but was hit with a taser before he could continue talking. That's one down. The chief said, what do you think happened? An officer asked, back up. The chief replied as he saw the other eight bandits packed up and ready for court. Meanwhile in the bank, the last thug was looking around wildly before he spotted a blonde, green-eyed female discreetly trying to leave while he was distracted. The thug made his way to her and pulled her hair, pointing the gun at her face. You see this? The thug asked seemingly nobody unless you want this blonde's blood on your hands. You have until the count of three to come out and surrender. He looked around and saw nobody as he was still holding the female. Then he started one, two, two, one half, two, three quarters, three. But as he pulled the trigger, he felt nothing on his hand and looked to see the scared blonde in an empty hand. Then he asked the blonde what happened. I did, replied a voice, and they all turned to see a cat-like humanoid creature holding the gun before he crushed it into dust. What the hell are you, freak? The thug asked as he backed away, dropping the blonde in fear. Your worst nightmare. Naruto said before appearing in front of the thug, I hate it when guys like you threaten beautiful ladies like her. He then punched the thug, knocking him out before using his belt to tie him up, leaving him for the police. Naruto walked to the blonde 
and undid her gags. What's her name, miss? He asked. Sandra. The female replied, feeling safe around him. Then all of a sudden, there was a sound of slow beeping, and they looked to his chest, seeing the dial on his chest flash red. He had to act now in one last act of heroism. Care to direct me to your house as I take you there? I'm sure your family must be worried. Before Sandra had the decency to answer, she was picked up bridal style, much to her shock. Then the world became a blur to her. Flashback end. Turns out he saved Sandra Tennyson, who gladly took care of him as he passed out after the timer on the Omnitrix ran out because of overexhaustion. He met her husband, and when they asked about his why he was there and not with parents, he told them the modern version of his life because he felt like he could trust them. When they heard the gist of it, they were appalled at how a parent would treat their child because of something he didn't have if it was them. They would treat all children fairly. It was then that a decision was made concerning Naruto. Since he was disowned, they would raise them as their own if he agreed to it, something he accepted graciously. Since then, he met the other member of the family, his new little brother, Ben, who was excited to have an older brother. He explained about his watch to his unofficial adoptive parents because his mother was adamant about it. Since then, his life was better and a lot more comfortable in a place where he would like to call home. That was until two years later when he got into college on scholarship, something his adoptive parents were proud of and sad that he had to go, but he did promise that he'll be back, and they held on to it. He hated to see Ben cry, so he promised something to his brother, and with that, he left. That was two years ago, making four years in total now. He was back after completing a two-year program in advanced mechanics and a few electives, and he was happy he would see his family. He got down from the bus and thanked the bus driver before he picked up his bike from the front of the bus and got on it and rode to his house. It was good to be home in Bellwood High. Ring. Students were running home from school at the sound of the bell, signaling the start of summer vacation, but that wasn't the immediate plan for two bullies in the school. They decided to torment someone before they got home, and they cornered a defenseless boy in the corner. Looky here, Cash Little Hotshot here decided that he could run home without saying goodbye to his two best friends. The taller one looked to his partner, Cash who smirked. Let's show him how much we'll miss him, JT Cash, said to his partner JT, with his fist meeting his hands as they both crept to the defenseless boy. Hey, leave him alone, shouted a voice from behind them, and they turned around to see the resident looser. Ben Tennyson, who unknown to them, was acting the part of the loser due to an advice his big brother gave him years ago. If you have the skills, don't hesitate to show them, but mess with your enemies first. Deceive them till the point they believe you to be nothing, then strike with a vengeance when ready, his brother said to him during one of his teachings. Ben Tennyson was a 10-year-old boy with brown hair and green eyes. He wore a white round neck t-shirt shirt that had a thick black vertical stripe in the middle of the shirt starting from its neck to the waist. He had on a pair of green cameo baggy trousers and a pair of white and black striped sneakers. He was looking at the bullies with a look of anger ready to trash them as he took his fighting stance, the one of the Gokan. Look Cash, Bruce Lee Jr. thinks he can beat us. JT laughed at his taunt. Why don't we have some fun with him and show him taught to mess with his betters? Cash asked as they both stalked Ben forgetting about the boy they were tormenting. Ben smirked as they both charged him. Moments later, hey, get us down. JT yelled from a tree to Ben who was laughing at the bully that was hanging on his underwear with his partner. Ben just walked over to the boy who they were bullying and helped him up. The kid thanked him for his help. You're welcome. Ben said, how did you learn how to move like that? The boy asked. I thought him. A voice spoke from behind them, making Ben scratch his head in fear at who he knew was behind him. Until he felt a hand on his head and what was said after hate and blush and embracement but you did good little bro. Ben looked up and saw his big brother smiling at him with his eyes closed. He scratched his cheek and waved off his brother's hand from him. Stop that. You're embarrassing me. He said to his brother who shrugged. That's what big brothers are for. Naruto said and reached into his back, pulling out a black and green skateboard, handing it to Ben who looked excited at his board. Wow, awesome. Ben exclaimed and followed his brother to his bike. And as he got on, they both rode home, completely ignoring the bully's cries for help with smiles on their face. Later, as they reached home, Ben excitedly got off his board running to greet his parents and tell them the good news. Mom, Dad, you won't believe who just picked me up from school. He shouted as he entered the living room, seeing his mother there who turned and smiled at him. Your big brother? She asked and seeing Ben's surprised look, she laughed I was the one that sent him there to pick you up if not, your grandpa would. Grandpa's here? 
I completely forgot about the summer vacation. Ben said then he rushed to his room, gotta go pack up. Don't worry, Tyke. Naruto already did that for you. Your things are in the R. VA voice said, and Ben turned around to see a fairly overweight man in his late 60s with a keen sense for adventure in the tone of his voice. His grandpa wore a white shirt covered by a red button-up shirt with a floral design. He has gray hair and blue pants as well as black shoes. Grandpa! Ben greeted and gave his grandfather a hug, which he returned before he ran outside to the R. V, this is going to be so awesome, Ben said. Naruto sighed at his brother's cheerfulness and walked down from their room with a smile, seeing his grandfather, Max, who smiled at him. Ready to go? Max asked. Naruto nodded, but before he left, his mother called out. Are you going to tell him? She asked. Naruto scratched his chin in thought of how this was going to happen if it was going to happen. He looked back at his Omnitrix on his wrist and the expectant look on his grandfather's and mother's face and sighed, I'll tell him tonight. He said, creating smiles on both grown-ups' faces. Good choice, his mother said, and his grandpa agreed with her. Well, we should get going. Max said, don't want to burn daylight. He walked out of the house and Naruto gave his mother a hug before following him. Outside, Grandpa, what's taking so long? I already have second thoughts on coming along for this vacation because I can't spend another minute with this dweeb here. A female voice shouted as she walked out of the R. V with an annoyed scowl on her face. This female had short red hair held by a blue hair clip and green eyes. She wore a blue shirt with a cat logo on her chest and white capris. She wears a blue hair clip in her bangs. The sighed in relief as she saw her grandfather finally. What took you? She never got to finish as she saw what she thought was the most handsome male in her life. Is something wrong? Max asked as he looked at Gwen who was looking like a love-struck teen at seeing Naruto behind him. Here he had to suppress a smirk and tap Naruto's shoulder who looked at his grandfather in confusion. Hey, kid, looks like you got a crush. He said to Naruto who was confused and looked to where his grandfather was pointing and had to suppress a groan at the love-struck girl in front of him. Naruto had foregone his red hood and put on a dark blue round neck shirt under an orange long sleeve jacket that had the collars pointing upwards. He also wore brown cameo trousers and still had the same pair of sneakers on with his headphones on his neck connected to an iPod in his pocket. He smiled and walked to the girl in front of him. Hi, I'm Naruto, Ben's adoptive big brother. What's your name? He politely asked, Gwen Mai is Nam, I mean my name is Gwendolyn, my friends call me Gwen. She quickly corrected embarrassed at the mistake she made in front of him. Naruto just smiled at how cute that was. Can I call you Gwen? Naruto asked, you can call me anything you want. Gwen sighed in a dream like trance but quickly shook her head, I mean sure you can, I think I'm going to enjoy being friends with you. Naruto said before he walked to the R. V and waited patiently for her to enter before he did. Gwen blushed at the gesture and entered the van, thanking Naruto, before rushing inside quickly. Naruto smiled and entered the R, V before shutting the door, and minutes later, the R, V left the Tennyson Manor. 8 p.m., campsite. The R, V was parked in the woods as the tree kids were preparing waiting for what their grandpa had to offer for dinner. Max came out with a bowl of what looked like pasta, but once he got closer, what they saw disgusted them. What the heck is that? Naruto asked, disgusted at the dish in front of him. Marinated mealworms. Max said, hard to find them fresh in the States. They're considered a delicacy in some countries and completely grotesque in others. Gwen said, disgusted at the amount of worms in front of her, but glad to be sitting beside Naruto. If these don't sound good, I got some smoked sheep dung in the fridge. Max said, ugh. Ben was disgusted from the other side of the table. Can't we have a burger or something? He asked his grandpa and Gwen agreed with him but were disappointed when he disagreed. Nonsense. This summer's gonna be an adventure for your taste buds. Max said, I'll grab the tongue. With that, he left to the RV. Ben, Gwen, and Naruto huddled together coming up with a plan. I've got three Rise crispy Bars in my bag. What about you guys? Naruto asked. Some Rise Cakes. Gwen said, Half-eaten bag of corn chips. Ben finished and looked to his brother. Think it can last? Naruto asked and they all gave a depressed sigh at this. Meanwhile, in the outskirts of space, a smaller transport ship was moving as fast as it could, avoiding the beams sent its way. Why a larger battleship? But one beam hit the ship, causing a minor malfunction. In the battleship, droids were on the control panel firing the beam at the ship that was holding their current object of interest, the prototype Omnitrix. As the beam hit, 
A droid looked into the darkness of the ship where their master was residing, seeing a pair of red eyes in the shadows. It spoke to its master. Their propulsion systems have been hit. Prepare to board. Their master said in a raspy voice, I want the Omnitrix now. Suddenly, they were hit by a beam from the ship below them. Angered, their master ordered a powerful blast sent to the transport ship's way, destroying three quarters of it. You could see a small sparkle as a pod detached from the ship, heading to its current destination, Earth. On Earth, Ben was on his big brother's computer playing video games while Gwen was browsing. Naruto was nowhere to be seen at the moment Max came out asking a question after looking at his grandkids. Who wants to roast marshmallows? Can't busy. They both replied, and Max sighed and walked inside, a bit dejected. Ben paused his game, I need to go for a walk. And he closed Naruto's PC, rushing into the woods while Gwen shook her head. With Ben, Ben was walking in the forest after taking a leak, sighing at how boring he thought that this summer was going to be. This is starting to turn out to be the worst vacation ever. He said walking with his hands in his pockets until he noticed a spark in the sky, whoa, a shooting star. He exclaimed in awe until that awe turned to fright as the star changed its direction heading for him. He gasped in surprise before diving out of the way as the shooting star made contact with the earth, causing a minor explosion. As the explosion died down and Ben recovered, he looked to see a crater and walked to it seeing that it wasn't deep. He spied inside it and saw something glowing red hot steaming from the intense heat. Looks like a satellite or something. He said as he saw a spherical object in the crater. He jumped in and the spherical object opened up revealing something inside. The object looked like a very big wristwatch, primarily black and gray in color, with a gray or black dial in the middle like a watch face, which has a green hourglass shape on it. What's a watch doing in outer space? Ben asked as he used his left hand to reach for it, that is until it opened up and latched on his wrist. Curious, Ben looked at the watch that latched on his wrist. Though he was surprised at first, but he decided that being surprised doesn't get this thing off, so he inspected the watch and saw two green dials on each side. He pressed them together, and in the faceplate rose up, and the arrows facing each other shifted, revealing an image of a humanoid. Thing with flaming head. He pushed the image down, and in a flash of green light, he was different. He looked at his hands, I'm on fire, but I don't feel anything. He said and noticed his voice was raspy and deeper woe. My voice changed. He then scratched his chin and thought, I wonder. He charged up a fireball and aimed at a branch at the tree in front of him. He fired a perfect shot and smirked. Sweet. And in a moment of stupidity, Ben started to launch fireballs ranging from small to medium all over the forest, unintentionally creating a forest fire. Ben noticed this a minute later, oh. He said worried that the fire will expand reaching the campsite, so he tried to put it out the old-fashioned way without water. Campsite. While Ben was having his own issues, Gwen was on her computer using her Wi-Fi to check for something. She didn't notice the figure creeping up behind her until he spoke from behind her how to impress guys. The figure said in humor and was amused at her reaction, you don't need to go to the net to find out how to impress me. Gwen blushed and closed her PC, turning around to face Naruto, who had that certain mirth in his eyes, something that made her blush. Even further, it wasn't for you. She said, and she quickly got up, picking her computer, rushing into the R. V, that was until Naruto, who was looking for his brother, noticed something. Who's dumb enough to start a forest fire? He asked, then not only did his eyes widen in realization, Gwen's did, and they replied at the same time. Ben, I'll get the fire extinguisher. Naruto said, and Gwen hurried to drop her PC, and followed Naruto as he went to search for Ben in the woods. Burning forest. Ben was a nervous wreck when he couldn't put out the fire. His brother would be so disappointed in him when he finds out about this, but hearing footsteps behind him, he might as well take the punishment now. As he turned around, Gwen screamed in fright at the falling being before her, whereas Naruto stood firm and brave, standing in front of Gwen taking the Goken stance with a serious expression on his face. What are you? He calmly asked, unaware of what the girl behind him was thinking. He's so brave protecting me from that flaming monster. Gwen thought admiration overriding her fear, and that admiration was turning into something deeper. I wish I could be as brave as him. Guys, calm down, it's me, Ben. The creature said, and before it knew it, he was sent flying backwards from a roundhouse kick Naruto sent to his front. And if you saw the look on Naruto's face... Even the scariest of monsters would be intimidated. It's one thing for you to start a forest fire that was intended to harm others, Naruto said in a scary tone, then out of nowhere. 
He brought out a pair of silver nunchaku and started spinning them in an impressive show of skill before ending it with a slam on the ground. It's another to go impersonating my little brother. That is something that I cannot take lightly. Naruto said, then moved to attack the creature unaware of the effect it was having on a certain redhead. The creature had to think fast because he knew that Naruto could beat him if he wanted then. He had an idea that froze Naruto in his tracks. Those who break the rules are trash, but those that abandon their comrades are worse. You told me that before you started to train me in martial arts, and you gave me another advice if you have the skills. Don't hesitate to show them, but mess with your enemies first. Deceive them till the point they believe you to be nothing, then strike with a vengeance when ready. What makes you think I'm not following it now? Ben. Naruto asked uncertain what happened. Ben went into a tale of what happened minutes prior to his brother and cousin. Ben was a bit surprised that this happened and that his brother thought of martial arts while Naruto was in thought. Why don't we get rid of this fire with a counter fire first before we come up with any decision? Naruto suggested and motioned for Ben to do his work that he did graciously like an expert already. Naruto was impressed at what he did before he heard beeping and saw the symbol on Ben's chest flash red before it died down. And in a flash, Ben was back to normal. Hmm, that's some funky watch. Naruto said as he inspected the Omnitrix on Ben's hand while Gwen agreed with him. I'm curious as to how many aliens you could turn into. Gwen mused out interested but heard running and turned behind them to see their grandfather running towards them. Will someone please explain to me what happened here? Max asked after panting a bit and Naruto decided to give him the short version of the story. Outskirts of space. What do you mean it's not there? An eerie voice asked in the battleship from before. Sensors indicate that a probe was sent to the planet below us just before the ship was evacuated. The droid said to its dismantled master in the tube that was helping him recover from the Resen battle. The master looked at two bigger and more battle-focused droids. One of you go, the other followed ten minutes later. The master said and the droids obeyed the order and the first one left the ship, its destination. Secure the Omnitrix. Back on Earth. Looks like it's a playlist of 10 different aliens, each with its own unique abilities. Gwen summarized after inspecting the watch. I think the best option is to train in each of these forms so that you can get the hang of each transformation. Know their strengths and weaknesses so that if you transform into one you don't want, you can use the current alien to ensure victory. Naruto said, and Max agreed. And I know which alien to pick. Ben said, and without thinking, he pressed the dial on the watch, and as the faceplate rose up, he slammed it down, and in a flash of green light, gone was Ben, and in his place was a huge, the size of a car, orange dog with no eyes, ears, or tail. His teeth are very defined and stick out of his mouth. Roar! Ben said, confused that he lost his ability to speak. Gwen was in front of his dog form, and waved her arms in its face and deduced out the obvious looks like it has no eyes. Naruto picked a stick ready to test its other reflexes and was impressed at its ability to sense the attack coming, but it has other senses. Ben was excited and decided to test run this alien by moving deeper into the forest, ignoring protests sent his way. He was so distracted, he didn't notice the UFO above him until he heard the beeping and sensed a laser being shot his way. He jumped to another three hanging off it looking for what caused the damage, and he saw a strange-looking robot shaped like a flying saucer with hands and legs looking down at him before it fired. Ben was evading all its shots and hid from the robot's sight as it was searching for where Ben might be, but it was taken by surprise when Ben jumped at him and ripped off its head, and before Ben could go further, the Omnitrix symbol on his shoulder was beeping red, so he jumped off the robot as it was heading for a collision course to a wall. Ben was back to normal as he landed, and he inspected the explosion, giving it a 10 out of 10 that was until he heard beeping and saw another robot floating above him. Oh! He said that was until its head was kicked off by his big brother, who landed and whacked his head. Don't do that next time. Naruto yelled at Ben. Ouch! I'm sorry, all right. I won't run off like that. Ben said, rubbing his hurt head. Later, we shouldn't fool around with that thing until we know what it is. Max said, what you did was reckless, Ben. Sorry, Grandpa. A humble Ben said, about the watch. I think there's a function in it that lets you stay transformed into the aliens you pick. Naruto mused. That would be so cool. Then I wouldn't have to worry about the time out when saving lives. Ben exclaimed, much to the annoyance of Gwen. We haven't decided what to do with it yet apart from getting familiar with the alien's doofus. So don't get your hopes up. Gwen said, Radio, Mayday, Mayday, somebody help us. I think we're being attacked 
by some sort of robot. Looks like the decision on whether we want to help people change just now. Naruto said, and they left the R. V to C, help the civilians. Ben reached the danger zone and pressed the dial on the Omnitrix, selecting the alien he wanted. He smacked the faceplate down and in a flash of green light, Diamond Head was in his place. They then saw the robot attacking, I'll get its attention, you guys get the campers to safety. Ben said, and they agreed not before Naruto wished his brother good luck. As they left, Ben rushed head first as Diamond Head to the robot and punched it making it stumble a bit. The battle droid saw Ben and scanned his whole person spotting the Omnitrix symbol on his chest, then it fired a beam from his hand at him, sending Ben flying back a bit. Ben got up from the wreckage by slicing his way out and he looked at his hand cool. He said then he rushed at the robot trying to give it a punch, but it jumped avoiding the blow attempting to land on Ben, but Ben saw this coming and he back flipped out of the way. Ben then got into his Goken stance and gave the droid a come hither motion, forcing it to shoot a beam at him. Ben ducked the beam, redirecting it to a tree, causing it to fall directly on an unsuspecting Gwen if Naruto wasn't there to break the three in half with a kick. Naruto looked at Gwen who was shocked and cupped her cheek, are you okay? He asked her. Gwen just nodded in response before Naruto took her to a safer place, giving Ben the go-ahead. Ben saw this and ducked a claw swipe from the droid before grabbing its hand and morphing his hand into a sword and slicing it off. The droid stumbled back a bit and looked at its destroyed hand before looking back at Ben, who was looking at it with a smirk. It fired a more powerful beam at Ben, who placed his arms in front of him, catching the attack, and redirected the reflecting beam back to it, destroying it completely. All right. Gwen cheered amongst the audience. Way to go, Diamond Head. Mux cheered. Ben looked at his adoring audience with a smug look and looked at his nails. I think my work here is done. He said before he left the area, in the outskirts of space, you may go and complete this mission, the master said to the second battle droid from his tube. The droid then walked to the hatch of the ship and launched itself to Earth. With the Tennysons, the Omnitrix was in timeout mode and the Tennysons were packing up for the night. Max looked at Naruto who saw his gaze and nodded with a sigh. He walked to his little brother and cousin who were setting up their sleeping bags bin. There's something I need to tell you and I guess now is as good a time as any. He looked at a curious Gwen, and I might as well tell you too, Gwen. What about Grandpa? Ben asked. He already knows. Naruto said, then pulled the sleeve on his hand, revealing his watch to Ben and Gwen. That's just a watch, Naruto, you told me. Ben said. Gwen, on the other hand, was starting to see similarities between the watch and Ben's Omnitrix. It's not a watch, Ben. It's a crash. They looked and saw another battle droid a few feet from then. Crap. Watch is timed out. I can't do anything. Ben said in panic and Naruto had a serious face walking up to the droid. You don't have to. He said to his brother and before Ben could protest, Naruto brought his wrist to his chest pressing the dial on his Omnitrix, forcing the faceplate to shift creating a hologram of the different set of aliens in his collection. Naruto selected the one he wanted and slammed the faceplate down in a similar fashion Ben did earlier and a green light surrounded the area. As it was done, they heard a funny voice that sounded a bit like a wrestler. Let me tell you something, you stupid robot. It started you think you and your buddy can come here and mess with Wrath's family time? He snarled and smacked his left fist into his right palm. No one messes with the Wrath. Is that your brother? Gwen asked, pointing to what they were seeing. Ben just nodded shocked to do anything for what he just saw through his world for a loop. Okay, well, not really, but this is a serious situation. Standing in front of them was a hulking nine-feet figure. It was an orange and white bipedal tiger with one claw coming out of each wrist and no tail. He is also muscular and has green eyes that were glowing with rage. Roar! Wrath snarled and rushed to the droid, catching its arm that was going in for the swipe before clawing out said arm. Wrath looked at the arm, then the droid, and smirked then charged again, using the machine's arm to hit the robot repeatedly. Stop hitting yourself. Rath said each time he was smashing the droid with his arm, destroying it pretty easily. Wow, your brother really knows how to handle himself. Gwen said shocked at the brutality. Don't worry about him. It's this form's character trait. Max explained it seems he's prone to anger and solves it the only way it knows how. It's fists? Ben asked but then noticed something and asked his grandpa, how do you know that? I thought you knew nothing about the watch. I help your brother train. That was all he said to get Ben calming down. Looks like he's done. Gwen mused, and they saw that as Wrath ripped the head oof the droid before crushing it, 
and jumping of it as it fell to the ground. Wrath roared in victory before turning to his family and pressing the dial on his chest, deactivating the Omnitrix, revealing Naruto, who was scratching the back of his head at his brother's look that was demanding for answers. Yep, this was going to be a great summer indeed. As Naruto explained to Ben about how he got his watch and what the watch was, at first Ben was excited, then he was upset that Naruto kept this from him, so Naruto cheered him up by helping him figure out how to work his Omnitrix. But not as well as he himself, because that would be an unfair advantage, and Ben needs the experience to be able to master it as good as him. He also found out that Gwen was smart for her age, almost as smart as he is, so he was able to talk about advanced mechanics with him, and when he spoke about a plasma rifle he built, she was thrilled and practically demanded to show her. It was a weapon that fires highly concentrated lasers, and she tested it on a tree that blew up completely. When he went into the inner mechanics for the gun, she was smitten even more and wanted to go out with him, but since she was 10, she was too young, so they settled to be just friends. Meanwhile, Ben was on his way to mastering his version of Hotspot that he decided to name Heat Blast, and he was making fine progress for someone who recently got the device, but he wasn't able to complete the training as the radio signal picked up a police transmission complaining of a burning house not far from where they currently were so they got in the R, V, and left the area to help the police. In the burning house, the house inside was burning with an intense heat. Two civilians were trapped underneath a burning house. The roof was about to fall on them, but it was caught by a heroic bin that arrived on time as heat blast looking down on his rescue, who were looking at him with awe. Who are you? The boy asked being protected by his mother seeing heat blast hold on the piles of wood that was about to fall on them. Don't worry, I'm here to help. Ben said then he scorched the wood he was holding before sucking the fire around them, creating a path for them to follow once a door was seen. As Ben mentioned the okay, the kid rushed to the door and reached the stairway leading down and out of the house, but as they were about to move further, it collapsed freezing them in tracks. Ben looked around and spotted a window this way, he said, and they were escorted to the window where Ben created a vortex of fire surrounding them, safely transporting them and himself out of the building to safety. I'm sure you all want to thank me, but really it's all in a day's work for Ben spoke to the odd crowd in front of him. That is until he saw something that caught his attention no way. A gold sumo slammer card. He exclaimed in awe at the golden cards he saw the boy he saved earlier and immediately went to his side, where did you get it? He asked, I found it in a box of sumo slammer cereals. The kid said to the fire monster beside him, confused as to why it would want one of these. Doyat blast. Stop messing around. Naruto said, as the rust bucket pulled up with Max and Gwen in tow, that was a distraction. The robbers are on the run. Ben got up on it, he said, and with arms aimed on the ground. He took flight and followed the R. V as it was on the move, leaving a confused group of civilians behind. Later, they were trailing behind the robber's car with Ben flying above and the R, V directly below him and behind the other car. Ben then flew over to the other car and landed on the roof of it with a thud, startling the drivers in it. What the hell was that? Robber 1 asked his partner who looked outside to see a rust bucket chasing them. I don't know, man, but there's an R, V chasing us. Robert too said to one, his partner just sped on trying to lose the van behind them unaware of the fire being above them. That is until the roof of the car was ripped open and Robert too was dragged off his sit, causing his partner to forcibly stop the car, sending Ben flying at the unexpected stop, crashing hard to the fence in front of him with Robert too on his hand. Ouch. Now that was not what I was going for. Ben said as he got out of the rubble, holding the knocked out robber on his hand before setting him down. He heard a click and saw the driver out of the car holding an AK-47 aiming at his face. You gotta be pretty stupid to think that'll stop me, Ben said, and he aimed a small fire at the gun that melted it forcing the robber to drop it on the ground because of the heat. Now I'm gonna have to ask you to get on your knees with your arms behind your back. And the robber seeing no other alternative just followed the order. But then as he got on his knees, he heard a beeping noise over some police sirens and saw a red flash. Hey, you're just a kid. The robber said as he saw a detransformed Ben behind him, seemingly ignoring the fact that the Omnitrix disappeared. Ben got into the Gokan fighting stance, and I can still whoop your butt. He said to the robber who growled, and as he was about to get up and attack the kid, he heard cars pulling over and felt Taz before he was knocked out cold. Secure the other one, tie them up, and take them to the cars. 
The chief police said and looked at Ben, who sighed in relief, it's safe to go home, kid. By the way, love the way you held your own on a superior opponent. Thanks, Ben said, and with that he went to the corner of the street to enter the R. V with his family waiting for him, telling Max to stop at Mega Mart to get some cereal in there. Meanwhile, in an apartment block, click, the door was opened and a person walked inside the apartment pisses that the owner of this apartment hadn't paid his dues that's been over six months. As he walked in, the apartment looked creepy filled with animals of different kind all in a protective glass. Phew, smells like a zoo in here. The man said as he continued to walk to the person he was looking for that was until he walked into an empty cage that caught his attention. He was examining it until a frog came out of the log that startled him a bit. As this was going, he didn't notice the shadow that was creeping up behind him until the owner spoke. How did you get in? The owner demanded scaring the manager into a mini heart attack. Paskey, the manager said fixing his tie, I am still your landlord, remember? Maybe not since your rent is six months past due. He ended. All my funds go into my research. The scientist said, now get out. You're disturbing me, he yelled, pointing to the door. Looks like you were disturbed long before I got here. The landlord said, listen, doc, you and your furry friends are out on the street unless you pony up the green. He held out his hand, hoping that Onimo, the resident, will pay for it. Pony up? Interesting choice of phrases. Onimo said, picking up a frog from its habitat, you must be an animal lover. Then you're going to love this. He dropped the frog on the floor and went to pick up a helmet with two horns on it something that caused laughter from his uninvited guest. What's that? You a member of the Moose Lodge or something? The landlord said, this is my transmodulator. Onimo explained, pointing to the device that was strapped on his chest phase one. It creates and accelerates mutations at the genetic level. He smugly stated and turned the dial on his chest observe. The device charged up and shot a red beam from each horn aiming for the frog that was in the range of its attack. In a flash of red light, the frog grew nearly reaching the roof of the room. He looked bigger and had two set of eyes, one directly above the other, and a pair of horns on its head. The frog swallowed the landlord in a gulp and Onimo couldn't resist. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, but it sounds like you have you got a frog in the throat, or should I say it's the other way round? He began to cackle louder as the mutated frog spat the landlord out of his mouth and into the wall knocking him unconscious. Picking up a bit of an old newspaper clipping, Onimo said, I'm so close to getting what is rightfully mine. All I need is a few lousy components and I'll be able to finish my work. So whether your need from hairspray to electronics, Onimo suddenly heard a peppy commercial on the TV where it explained about the new Mega Mart that opened up. Seeing this, Dr. Onimo said, ah, just what the doctor ordered. With the Tennyson's, Naruto, Ben, Gwen and Max were walking in a superstore with Max pushing the trolley and Ben looking left and right, excited at the items he was seeing. Ben spotted the aisle he was looking for, the cereal aisle, and he then rushed to pick up the first box of Sumo Slammer cereal he found. Sumo Slammer cards, cool! Ben exclaimed as he saw it on the prize section of the box. He had a mischievous smirk on his face as he saw Max and Gwen were busy looking for food while Naruto was in the electronic section. He looked at his Omnitrix and a plan formed in his head. With Naruto, Naruto was just browsing through the electronic section wondering on how far Ben had progressed in his training. He was impressed at how Ben was able to improvise with Heat Blast and when he mastered how to control his flames, he was proud. Now he was thinking of what alien he should train next and what alien he should unlock as a gift should Ben master five of his aliens. Gray Matter? No, he doesn't need any familiarization with him. How about Ghost Freak? No, I just get this odd feeling whenever Ben turns into that alien, and what was it that Azmuth said about ectoneurites? I'll think about it when I have the time. Now who should I train next? He was forced out of thought when Gwen asked his grandfather a question. No offense, Grandpa, but can we have a normal dinner for once? That now got him to remember that he needed to buy some real food and hide it from his grandfather. So he went to the pasta section of the store and quickly selected pasta and then trailed off to the canned food section to pick up some spices for the sauce he was going to use. He paid for the item and sealed it in a scroll pocketing it. And when he passed the cereal section, he saw it when holding a small gray toy that moved on her arms hidden at her back talking to the store manager. He walked over to them and asked, is something the matter? Yes. The store manager said this young lady over here thought that it would be a good idea to open these boxes of cereal spread all over the place. He motioned to the mess around them and Naruto knew instantly it was Ben that did it and sighed. I'll handle it from here and pay for the boxes. 
Naruto said, and the manager smiled in appreciation before he left. They heard a beeping noise, and Gwen decided it was time to have payback, so she let Ben fall to the ground as Grey Matter. Why did you have to do that? Grey Matter asked in a squeaky voice before a bright light occurred, and Ben was seen in the place of Grey Matter, holding his injured ass. Ben, Naruto, said warning him. Sorry, won't happen again, I swear. Ben said knowing that his brother can be scary at times. Naruto sighed and motioned for them to gather the boxes while he went for Grandpa. Later, by the cash register, Naruto was just bringing out his wallet irritated that he had to pay for what his idiot of a brother did. Ben was scowling that he didn't get what he wanted, and Gwen was beside Naruto annoyed at Ben also. Max was just confused as to how this happened. As they were about to pay for the items, they started to feel many quakes, and the store started to shake, forcing the manager to hide under the table in panic. Crash! The wall beside them exploded, and as the smoke cleared, it revealed Dr. Onimo on Hit Frog entering the store. Whoa! An odd Ben said while Gwen and Max looked surprised. Nardo not so much. Onimo ignored them and looked to the electronic section. He jumped down his frog because he found what he wanted and wanted to claim it, but Ben wasn't standing for any of that. Hey, what are you doing? He asked the doctor as he stole the items while the rest of his family tried to shut him up. Don't be a hero, kid, Onimo said as he walked to Ben. Just run along and play. Ben looked at his powered down Omnitrix and on instinct, dodged a tongue sent his way by the frog. Onimo walked to his frog and sat on it, but as he was about to make a getaway, he was halted by two mall cops. Freeze! Officer 1 ordered get down to that giant frog and put your hands up. Onimo smirked and hopped over the officers, heading to the animal section of the store to find some new experiments as the officer tried to call for backup. As he reached the aisle he was looking for, Onimo turned the dial on his chest and aimed the rays that shot out at the pets, two in particular, a hamster and a bird. Both animals mutated into a bigger, nastier version of themselves, and Onimo ordered them, Arise to your full potential, my pets. Meanwhile, Ben and the rest of his family just arrived to see the mutated animals grow big, and Ben had to make a comment. Whoa, what kind of pet foods are they serving around here? I know I wouldn't want to buy it. Naruto said, and Gwen and Max agreed. Behold, the genius of Dr. Aloysius James, Onimo. He announced to his odd audience, nothing can stop me from getting what I deserve. Mark my words today, I'll make history. Or should it be prehistory? Ben? When asked, the Omnitrix is out. I can't help. Ben explained, and they all turned to Naruto, who was looking at them confused. What? He asked, aren't you going to help? Ben asked, think of it as experience. Naruto explained, what would you do if the Omnitrix wasn't available? The giant hamster roared at them, and they all stepped back along with Naruto who didn't really want to hurt the animals, but with the way the hamster has started chasing them, he had to reconsider. It wasn't until he leapt over him and Ben and cornered Max and Gwen that he decided to end it. He spotted a ball and threw it at the hamster telling Ben to take cover. Hey, ugly, come and get it, Naruto said as he got into the Gokin stance, giving the hamster a come-hither motion, to which it obliged by charging angrily at Naruto, who were ignoring the yells of Gwen and Max as he waited for the hamster to reach him before he ducked under the charge and gave it a kick on its stomach, sending it flying up before he used the shelves as support to help him leap higher than the hamster and unconsciously added his chakra to his leg, adding more power to its blow before flipping and giving it a drop kick, sending it crashing down heavily to the ground, knocking it out completely. That was awesome. Gwen cheered from her spot. Thanks for the save, kiddo. Max said, still reeling from the brief run he had something that Ben noticed from his spot. Are you okay, Grandpa? He asked and Max waved his worry away. That was until the ground shook, signaling the return of Onimo, who was pissed. You fool. You cannot stop me. Onimo said I will turn Washington D. C into Washington B.C. With that, he got off his frog and leapt on the mutated bird that came to pick him up and they both left the store with the frog following behind. You saved the store? The store manager said, coming to see the monsters leave, if there's anything I could do to repay you, anything you want. Ben suddenly got a devious idea and smirked well. He would have continued that was until Max dragged him to the store with Gwen and Naruto in tow. On the road, the R. V was on the road, chasing the giant bird with Onimo on top of it with Max behind the wheels trailing the bird. Ah, this reminds me of the good old day, Max said to Ben, who was at the front seat sulking for his loss of his sumo slammer cards before I retired. Gwen noticed something wrong here, 
and asked, so what kind of plumber were you? Max stuttered a bit and answered a darn good one. Ben stopped sulking in front. Naruto said from the other side of the back seat, where Gwen was sitting, you'll get the cards next time. Fine. Ben said after he sighed, making Naruto sigh in relief until they heard ringing from Gwen's computer. Bingo. Gwen said catching everyone's attention five years ago. Onimo was a promising researcher in veterinary science, but it turns out he was mutating animals and when he didn't win some big prize, well, he threw a tantrum like a baby and vowed revenge? Naruto asked and Gwen nodded. Didn't he say he wanted to make prehistory? Max asked while driving. That's it. I know where he's going. Ben exclaimed much to the surprise of Gwen, and as he told them his idea, they drove to the one place they knew he would be from what they just realized, the Natural History Museum. As they packed the R, V. Ben, Max, and Gwen came out of the vehicle rushing inside the museum with Naruto staying behind, something that Gwen noticed. Why aren't you coming? She asked, catching the attention of the other two. Yeah, we could use the help. Ben said, you guys go on. There's something I want to check out first. Naruto said, and Ben and Max headed to the door with Gwen, waiting behind, voicing her curiosity. What do you want to do that made you stay behind? She asked, something that I've been working on that I want to give a test run. Naruto said, it's just a prototype though. Can I see? She eagerly asked, in due time. Now head in after those two, and be careful out there. Naruto said, waving off her curiosity. I don't want to lose one of the first real friends I have. Here, Gwen blushed and left Naruto to his devices something he was glad for. He went back into the R, V and picked up his bag and brought out a box, opening it revealing a black ninja face max with red outlines around the edges. He went to the washroom and looked in the mirror seeing himself before putting on the mask over his head. Red seals appeared all over his body and seconds later, he was wearing a full body black ninja spandex that fit him perfectly with red outlines around all the edges of the feet, arms, and he had on a red scarf and red martial arts belt on his hips. Only his bright blue eyes could be seen through the eye holes as he was inspecting the suit he made on his own. Not bad, Naruto said as he looked himself in the mirror. Now to take this for a test run, he then brought out three smoke bombs and dropped them on the floor forcing them to explode, and as they cleared, he was gone as well. With the others, Max, Gwen and Ben were in the museum, following the trail of feathers and destruction left by the insane doctor. Wow, never thought I'd spend my summer vacation visiting a history museum. Ben said, even a dweeb like you needs to learn a thing or two before school resumes. Gwen insulted, causing Ben to pout at the jab. Now kids, we're not here to argue. We're looking for the mad doctor. Max said as the turned into a corner, and I think we found him. Ben said, spotting Onimo working. Onimo heard the noise and looked up from his work. You're too persistent. I hate persistent. He said before he aimed his rays on the dead bone of a mammoth displayed in the museum. Now time for step two of my plan. He said and activated his transmodulator firing at the bones. And before the very eyes of the Tennysons, the mammoth was alive with all its flesh intact. And it seemed angry if the red eyes on its face was anything to go by. Behold the genus that is Onimo. Onimo announced before he left the mammoth to deal with these pests. Ben, Gwen said, on it. Ben said, and he turned into four arms as he pressed the dial on his chest. Let's wrestle. He then charged the mammoth with all his might, giving his grandpa and cousin a chance to go after Onimo, something they took advantage of. With Gwen and Max. Gwen and Max saw Onimo in the dinosaur section, looking at the Triceratops bone, and before they could stop him, he fired his transmodulator beam at the bones, bringing the species back to life and ordering it to attack the Tennysons along with the bird that just arrived. As Onimo saw they were distracted, he fired the beam at the bones of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, bringing it back to life before jumping on it. No one will stop me from getting what is rightfully mine. He yelled out before he left his pets to deal with the Tennysons that were doing all they could to evade the monsters in front of them. That is until something was thrown at said monsters distracting them and a voice spoke out to them. Hey ugly, get ready to be extinct again. When Gwen and Max looked, they saw a figure about the same height as Naruto in a black ninja jumpsuit with a red vertical line along the front of the outfit from its neck to its hip that was wrapped up in a red GI belt that fit with the outfit. His mask had a vertical red outline from its head to its eyes and he wore a dark red scarf. He was standing on the wall looking down on them, but Gwen noticed those eyes that were revealed, probably the only thing revealing about the suit. Those who watch Randy Cunningham, 
Ninth grade ninja should know the suit I'm referring to if not. Look it on Google. Well, that and the suit never hid the hair design, and she just put two and two together and smirked. Is this the thing you said you were getting out of the R? V? She asked surprising Max as he had no idea who this person was and wanted in his RV. Of course, only a smart girl like you would be able to realize the boy she has a crush on has a mask. Naruto said, causing Gwen to blush. I do not have a crush on you. When muttered to herself, Naruto chuckled to himself and Max realized who this was. Naruto? He asked. As Naruto wanted to answer, the wall shook and Naruto saw that the Triceratops below him. He looked back to Max hold that thought. He then materialized a sword and jumped to the ground a few feet away from the creature before he dashed towards it and jumped to the wall as the dinosaur charged at him. He then readied his sword and jumped from the wall landing in front of the Triceratops before his sword started to hum. He closed his eyes in meditation as time slowed down when the Triceratops charged at him again. When Naruto opened his eyes, he was behind the Triceratops in a burst of speed. As he materialized the sheath, he gave the sword a 540 spin before slowly sheathing it with a cling simultaneously calling out the name of the skill set. Musei no kensei sakuho. Unlimited blade works. The Triceratops burst into tiny pieces as deep slashes appeared all over its body getting rid of it completely. The bird saw this and went to attack Gwen that was currently amazed at what she and her grandpa saw, but noticed the bird moments later and picked up a staff before using it to attack the bird. He's not the only one with moves, you know. Gwen said as the bird retreated briefly before Naruto appeared in front of them. Duh. He greeted. How did you do that? Gwen asked, wanting to know how to do what he did, but as he was about to answer, he had to duck an incoming attack from the bird that was behind him bit. That was a mistake as it used its talons to pick up Gwen by her bag before escaping with her. It was at that time for arms arrived, seeing his cousin being taken hostage, and without giving it any thought, he went after the bird, leaving Max and Naruto behind. So, how did you get the suit? Max asked his adoptive grandson. With minor help from my smart aliens, I managed to build a prototype bio suit that helps unlock dormant powers, if only you wear the mask. It would only accept those with dormant abilities and help them experience what they could do if said skill set is unlocked. Naruto explained. So the ninja thing? Max asked. My chakra's all but gone. He doesn't know it's healed yet. But I am the result of two powerful ninjas, even though I despise them so very, very much. Naruto said, and instantly, he knew who Naruto was referring to. Why don't we go help Ban and Gwen? Max suggested later, and Naruto agreed, before he pulled of the mask and one seal work later. He was back to his civilian attire. Later, Ben was lying in a crater created by his alien form as he failed in catching the bird, letting it fly away with his cousin. He got up and out of the crater only to see the R. V stopped in front of him with Max looking at him. Did someone call for a taxi? He asked, and Ben smiled before he got into the vehicle. They were driving when they heard the cell phone in the R. V ringing. Grandpa? Naruto asked. On it. Max replied and moved to where the signal was coming from, the Washington Monument. As all three reached their destination, they rushed out of the R. V to see Gwen's cell drop on the ground, hearing her screams of terror. It's hero time, Ben said, and he dialed up an alien he wanted and moments later, Ben was Stinkfly. He fluttered his wings and took off to save his cousin whose grip slipped, but was grateful for the save that was until Ben had to evade the bird heading his way. I think I'm going to puke. Gwen said from her cousin's back, spew on me and you better learn to fly fast. Stinkfly said as he kept on evading the bird. Max and Naruto saw the trouble that both were having and Naruto decided. I'm helping. He said as he dialed up the alien he wanted, he smacked the faceplate on his watch and in a flash of green light later, he was Chitrax. Gotta run. And with a dash of speed, he ran to the monument. Ben saw the green light and knew his brother had transformed you're gonna have to trust me. He said to Gwen who nodded and he was heading to the monument where he saw a blue slash black streak running on the walls and as he reached it, he threw Gwen who screamed in terror but was calmed down as the blur caught her and landed her on the ground safely. You okay? Naruto asked and Gwen nodded after muttering her thanks. He looked at Ben who was floating above them. Let's go get Animo. He said and one good luck later. Both left to deal with the insane doctor once and for all. With Animo, and here is my Verity's Award, it was an honor to be nominated with a distinguished group of scientists. Kelly Reed said, chuckling at the last part, 
which was until a crash was heard followed by a wall coming down. The scientists were granted the strange sight of a green man riding on a T-Rex. Kelly, I do believe you have something that is mine. Onimo said before he jumped down and grabbed the award with the speech he prepared, I'd like to thank the committee for this honor. He then got on his pet dinosaur and moved to attack his former colleague, but was stopped as he was punched out of his dinosaur by a blur and his dinosaur was. Attack moments after, Naruto and Ben arrived just in time to stop Onimo from attacking a civilian, something that displeased the doctor, so he sent his dinosaur to attack them, but Naruto told Ben to distract it while he dealt with the doctor. What are you? Onimo said scared as Chitrax picked him up from his collar. Your one-way ticket to defeat. Naruto said before he knocked Onimo out and grabbed the transmodulator from his head and crushed it with his hand, sending a shockwave of energy around a 250-mile radius. The mutated animals returned to their original form, and Onimo was captured by the police currently on his way to jail, all the way screaming his revenge on the one that stopped him. Meanwhile, the Tennysons were driving out of D. See, after this adventure, they had hoping to take a break for some time. I didn't get that gold sumo slammer card, but at least I got a souvenir. Ben said holding the crushed transmodulator on his hand, before placing it in the box in front of him, and his cousin plus, I guess, saving the city it his own reward. Don't forget, you and Naruto saved me. Gwen said thanks, both of you. No problem, Gwen. Naruto said from his place beside Max, and Ben waved off her thanks as well. So, Naruto, tell me something. Gwen said, do you have any more inventions? And how does that bio ninja suit work? Here she had to suppress a smirk as she caught Ben's attention and heard Naruto groan. Ninja suit? Ben asked his brother who had to look back and glare to a smug Gwen before he sighed and explained to his family. This is going to be a really long summer. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all are enjoyed this video. If you do, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to support author of this fanfic. So let's end this video here. Until then, see you in next video.